Good afternoon, um, good evening, good morning, wherever you may be uh, today. My name is Colin Dewar and I am the Director of External Relations at the British Columbia Council for International Education. Uh, welcome everyone to um, today's rebroadcast of a webinar entitled New Partnership Opportunities Throughout Southeast Asia, Collaborating with the Southeast Asia Ministers of Education Organization. Um, better known as the CMEO Center Network. So as I said, this is a rebroadcast. We're gonna um, uh, post right now, uh, as soon as I finish speaking. Um, uh, following the rebroadcast, we will have an opportunity for live Q&A based on the, uh, uh, on the webinar, on the uh, information session we're about to show. And then if there's any other um, uh, questions that come up from that, and also this is really an uh, event today, the, the rebroadcast of the webinar is a um, uh, event uh, one week prior to what's happening next week, which are, are the B2B meeting sessions between uh, British Columbia and Canadian institutions. And again, with our colleagues throughout Southeast Asia um, connected to the CMEO network. So I will stop my comments there, my live comments, and we'll, uh, we'll repost the webinar from January 19th. Um, and again, if you have questions, please use the chat box to, to submit your questions and we will get to those uh, at the end of the rebroadcast. So thank you very much. And um, I'll connect again following the, uh, the rebroadcast of the webinar. Thank you. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and welcome to today's webinar, New Partnership Opportunities Throughout Southeast Asia, Collaborating with the Southeast Asia Ministers of Education Organization, also known as CMEO. My name is Colin Dewar, and I am the Director of External Relations at the BC Council for International Education, and I'll be today's moderator. BCCA IE is a provincial agency under the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Training, advancing the interests of international education throughout the entire education sector in the province, including K-12, higher education, and the language sector. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge at BCCIE, we live and work on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples of Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get rolling. Uh, attendees will be muted uh, during the webinar. If you would like to submit a question to our panelists during the broadcast, please type them in the question box, which should be on the right-hand side of your screen if you're on a laptop, and we will get to those questions uh, nearing the end of the, uh, the presentation. If you require any technical assistance today, uh, please put all those questions in the, uh, in the question box as well, and we will do our best to, uh, to help you and get to your inquiry. Prior to introducing our panelists, I would like to thank everyone for joining us for a session that will further advance BC and Canada's growing international education relationships and presence throughout Southeast Asia. I'm happy to report today we have over 175 registrants from colleagues from across the province of BC, across Canada, and from a number of CMEO training centers, including CMEO centers in Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines, Thailand, and Cambodia. So thank you all very much for getting up so early uh, we really appreciate your, your commitment to this, this session. CMEO is a regional intergovernmental organization established in 1965 among governments of Southeast Asian countries to promote cooperation in education, science, and culture in the region. DCCIE has been engaged with CMEO for a number of years, but since 2016, we have co-hosted an international education conference with the CMEO Regional Training Center in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam and, and every, almost every year since that time. And of course, we have Dr. Mi Fang uh, with us today from, from the training center in, in Ho Chi Minh City. In 2018, BCCIE applied for affiliate status. And in August of last year, we received approval from the CMEO Council to be conferred as an affiliate member. This is a privilege for BCCIE, but more importantly, a great opportunity and of course, responsibility to further develop international partnerships and collaborations amongst the 11 CMEO member country network and the respective 26 training centers. 
With a population of about 670 million, Southeast Asia represents the third largest geographic population in Asia amongst subregions. There is much for BC educators to pay attention to in Southeast Asia. Last year, the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement on Trans-Pacific Partnerships came into effect. This is an 11-country trade agreement that includes Canada. This past November, Asia-Pacific nations signed their Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, resulting in the world's largest trade, uh, free trade agreement. This is all demonstrative of the increasing importance and collaborative sentiment growing throughout the region. Similarly, we expect to see increased cooperation and collaboration throughout our international education sectors. Our panel today is a step forward in that direction for increased cooperation and collaboration with, in our own work and our own sector. So allow me, finally, to introduce our panelists for today's webinar. We're pleased to have with us Dr. Randall Martin, Executive Director of BCCIE uh, in Vancouver. Jennifer Dobney, Executive Director of, for International Education at Global Affairs Canada, uh, based uh, in our capital, Ottawa. Uh, we have Dr. Ethel uh, Valenzuela, Director of Southeast Asia Ministers of Education Organization, Secretariat, based in Bangkok, Thailand. We have uh, Dr. Mi Fong, uh, who's the Director of CMEO Retrack in Vietnam, based in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Uh, we have Victoria Lee, Principal, Burnaby South Secondary School. And we have Carolyn Russell, Executive Director, Global Engagement from the University of Victoria. So thank you all to our panelists uh, for joining us today. So at this point, I'm going to hand over the, the floor and the mic to Randall Martin, Executive Director of BCCIE, for his, uh, his comments. Um, Randall, thank you. Thank you very much, Colin, Tom, Chelsea, all my colleagues at BCCIE. Um, I just discovered now, I, I thought I was a keynote speaker, so I have about 45 minutes of remarks I was going to make, but I'll have to shorten that based upon what Colin just said. Um, our colleagues in, uh, in Southeast Asia, thank you so much for waking up early. Uh, our colleagues in, uh, in Central and uh, Eastern parts of Canada, thanks for staying up so late. Um, the, one of the joys of uh, the new world order of uh, living on Zoom or living across time zones is having to uh, triangulate our, our schedules for things we used to do face to face, but now have to, have to better accommodate uh, time zones if we want to do things uh, synchronously. Um, I mentioned we have colleagues joining us today from across British Columbia, from uh, Alberta, from Saskatchewan and from Ontario. Uh, we really see this as a Canadian initiative, certainly when uh, BCCIE was nominated for and applied for the CMEO affiliate status. Uh, we were heartily endorsed, uh, endorsed by uh, Global Affairs Canada, um, who really saw this as, as uh, as something that would benefit all of Canada. And we in British Columbia, we're very proud of our education system, uh, but we only have about five and a half million people. And in order to really partner, I think, with uh, the 650, 700 million people in, in Southeast Asia on, on, on some kind of basis, we really need to, uh, to engage, I think, with all of Canada. And I think we bring a lot to the table in terms of uh, partnerships for uh, for CMEO and for the Southeast Asia uh, region. Um, our, our engagement, well, my own personal engagement, I, I, my first overseas job, my first uh, sort of falling in love with another culture, I was based early in my career in Indonesia for four years. And I, it's still my, you know, my, one of my favorite places on the planet. And uh, I'm so excited that uh, now uh, mid-career, some would say late career, I'm able to go full circle and, um, and uh, bring the potential for, for engagement, the potential for partnership uh, with Southeast Asia to, uh, to all of our colleagues in, in British Columbia and, and Canada. Um, BCCIE's engagement, uh, we had uh, supported Team BC missions to some of the study in Canada fairs. But I think it's safe to say our first mission with a previous Minister of Advanced Education, Dr. Maura Stilwell, came in 2009 um, when we first sort of dipped our toe in the water of looking for more serious engagement with, uh, with uh, uh, Southeast Asia. And we, we went to, to Vietnam to the study in Canada fairs there. And I met, I think, Dr. Mi Fong's predecessor at, at CMEO. Uh, we met people from the Vietnam Association for Community Colleges, the ambassador, uh, the consul 
uh, the visa folks. And that really was a, um, a startling introduction to the potential for uh, not just you know student recruitment and things like that, but the the great potential for partnerships and for our own our own learning in British Columbia for what we could learn in terms of intercultural training, in terms of different learning styles, and in terms of uh, the potential for for huge partnerships in one of the most important and, and dynamic regions in the world. Um, as Colin mentioned, we I think we signed our MOU with uh, with uh, Dr. Mifong uh, uh, with uh, Simi Retract, the regional training center in Ho Chi Minh City, that uh, oversees I think management and, and quality uh, training for higher education in uh, Indochina, in Vietnam, Laos, and, and Cambodia, and we have been co-hosting a conference with them every year since uh, 2006. We've been able to bring a lot of uh, of uh, Canadian and uh, and British Columbia senior administrators to uh, to uh, Vietnam to work at the conference to do other training. Uh, one of our speakers, uh, uh, Victoria, a bit later through Simeo Retrack, uh, we were able to go together to uh, Luang Prabang in in Laos and and do some training there. And these activities, uh, I think, led us to realize that. Uh, we could do a lot more in in Southeast Asia, and and we should be engaging all of British Columbia's, all of Canada's education system, and all of the CMEO network. So through the support of Global Affairs, through uh, uh, through the the support of Dr. Mi Fong and our friends, our original friends at uh, a Retrack, and uh, the strong support of Dr. Valenzuela and CMEO Secretariat, uh, we just found out. Uh, uh, in uh, 2020, that in fact we had been admitted into this fairly important and small group of affiliate uh, members with uh, with Simio uh, Secretariat. We were hoping Dr. Valenzuela could join us in March of 2020 for the API conference, uh, which unfortunately, uh, beyond our control, we had to postpone. That will now be taking place in March of 22. And uh, we look forward to well, Dr. Mi Fong and Dr. Valenzuela and many of our colleagues from Southeast Asia. Uh, we look forward to the opportunity to welcome you to Vancouver then. And certainly, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be, be able to be back to Southeast Asia well before then. So today, we're, we're, we're just going to be looking at a couple of case studies of people who have been engaged in Southeast Asia and the mutual uh, benefit of, of those engagements, of, of those relationships. And I think Colin will be setting the table for some future activities where we can uh, we can further these and more personalize these relationships moving forward. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us here today. It's truly appreciated. Uh, I look forward to what all of the speakers will be saying after me. And uh, with that, I will close my, my remarks. Thank you all very much. Thanks very much, Randall. Uh, and, and as Randall uh, mentioned, this is really part one of a part two event, and, and really it will be an ongoing rolling out of, of, of uh, opportunities and engagement to advance CMEO in BC in, in Canadian collaboration. Uh, so next, I'd like to invite Jennifer Dobney, Executive Director for International Education at Global Affairs Canada, for her remarks. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you very much, Colin. And it's a real pleasure. Uh, for me to be here tonight, uh, well, tonight in, in Ottawa, in any event, uh, representing the, the Government of Canada. I also wanted to extend uh, a very belated congratulations to CAMEO for its celebration of CAMEO Day and the 55th anniversary of the founding of the organization, which was on November 30th, uh, 2020. Um, Canada has uh, actually a long history of cooperation with uh, CAMEO. Uh, and Randall referred to some of this. Between 1985 and 1999, the former Canadian International Development Agency, uh, which was integrated into our Department of uh, Foreign Affairs in uh, 2013, funded over 17 million in projects supporting human resource development in the CMAO member countries via the regional centers. And there's also a CMAO Jasper Research Award, which was first granted in uh, 1993 with the support of Canadian government endowment. And this continues to be awarded each year to member CMEO member nation citizens recognized for conducting outstanding research. So we're certainly glad to see that linkages have recently been further strengthened between Canada and the CMEO network. And I hope today's session will help to increase
increased awareness of the many opportunities for collaboration in the area of international education and provide leads to new connections and partnerships. I'm just going to provide quite a brief overview of uh, Canada's approach to international education and uh, help to provide a little bit of context for, uh, for today's discussion. Uh, I'll just begin with some, you know, uh, some <laughs> facts that will not be new to many of you on the line, because I know there's many Canadians on the line. Uh, you know, it's important to note that Canada has no federal department of education. The provinces and territories, the 10 provinces and three territories, have exclusive jurisdiction over education under the Canadian Constitution. And the provincial and territorial uh, departments or ministries of education are responsible for the organization, delivery and assessment of education at the primary and secondary levels. They also authorize post-secondary institutions within their jurisdictions to grant academic uh, credentials. There is an intergovernmental body, the Council of Ministers of Education Canada, CMEC, which represents the collective education interests of provinces and territories, including internationally. The Global Affairs Canada works very closely with CMEC to advance Canada's international education interests. Uh, so just moving on, um, Global Affairs Canada's work on international education extends across our ministry's political trade and development streams. So I lead the International Education Division which contributes to efforts on the political and trade sides of education. So our key activities include promoting exports of educational services, branding Canada as a top-notch study and research destination and education partner. And many of you will be familiar with the EduCanada brand. And if you're not, we'd love that you become familiar with the brand and are able to use it in your international activities. So do not hesitate to reach out to me on the EduCanada brand. Uh, we also work to advance Canada's international education interests with international and domestic stakeholders. Uh, we manage international scholarship programs, mostly inbound, bringing uh, foreign students into Canada, but also some outbound, supporting Canadian uh, students to go abroad. And we support education promotion activities organized by Canadian embassies and consulates abroad. And Randall referred to some of these in his uh, comments about uh, some of his uh, early visits, their earlier visits to, uh, to Vietnam. Uh, our work is, uh, the work we do on education is really guided by the, um, the core objectives of the International Education Strategy, which was uh, launched by the Department of uh, Global Affairs Canada in 2019. And this really recognizes that international education is about much more than simply increasing the number of international students studying in Canada. Partnerships are a really important vehicle for achieving our objectives under the international education strategy. And they're a key area of focus for our trade commissioners abroad who work out of our embassies and uh, consulates in uh, various uh, countries abroad. Human capital development continues to be an key priority for Canada and its international uh, partners, including in Southeast Asia. And so our international education strategy certainly recognizes that education and lifelong learning, retraining and upskilling are key to su student success in the fast evolving global economy, along with soft skills such as critical thinking, problem solving and intercultural competencies. Through engagement with the CMEO network, our world-class Canadian institutions are well-placed to provide training solutions and support to member nations, including in teacher training and curriculum development, as they work to uh, upgrade their education sectors and equip citizens with the skills they need to be work ready. So we have a good foundation to build on. Canada welcomed over 35,000 students from the AMAO member states in 2019. And we are also very proud to fund the SEED Scholarship Program. This is open to 10 of the 11 CMO member nations. And this provides scholarships for students and mid-career professionals for short-term studies or research with Canadian post-secondary institutions. We're very happy to see the success of this program and the linkages it has created, including partnerships between 49 ASEAN institutions and 33 Canadian institutions in 2019. I'm also pleased to share that Global Affairs Canada will be supporting Vancouver Community College, VCC, 
as it becomes the new International Secretariat for University Mobility in Asia and the Pacific, UMAP, which many of you will know is a voluntary association of government and non-government representatives of the higher education sector. We certainly welcome UMAP's contribution to strengthening institutional linkages, cooperation and education mobility between Canada and other countries and territories in the Asia Pacific region and look forward to Vancouver Community College's leadership in continuing these efforts. So part of this support for the uh, VCC's UMAP role does include some additional funding for short-term inbound and outbound exchange opportunities open to Canadian and other students from UMAP member institutions. We hope this will help strengthen connections and cooperation between Canada and CMAO member nations whose institutions are engaged by UMAP. And we also hope that we will see more mobility soon. I mean, I know that uh, uh, students and international mobility is uh, to a large extent on, on uh, pause right now because of COVID, but uh, we're all hopeful that uh, we will be able to, uh, to get back to, uh, to some of these very exciting mobility programs and opportunities shortly. Um, so I'll just conclude by saying uh, we're really pleased to see BC, uh, BCCIE's active engagement to strengthen ties with CMAO and to build and expand bridges between Canadian education stakeholders and the training centres network. I look forward to hearing today's exchanges and I hope that these discussions will provide a useful starting point for new and expanded collaboration. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks very much, uh, Jennifer, for, for your comments and information, really helpful information. Thank you all for citing those programs, the SEED scholarships, as, as well as the UMAP. Uh, that, I think that's an exciting opportunity for Canada. Uh, BCCIE, uh, by the way, is, is acting as the National Secretary for UMAP. So if you do want further information uh, about that, you can check our website or you can just um, get a hold of somebody here at BCCA and we'd, we'd be glad to tell you a little bit more about that as well. Uh, so uh, at this point, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Ethel <coughs> to uh, to say a few words. Of course, Director, Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization Secretariat, uh, based in in Bangkok. And thank you again for joining us so early. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Colleen, and also good uh, evening to all of you there in Canada, and good morning to all of those who are just rising up in Southeast Asia. And I'm very happy and uh, honored to be with you in today's discussion on further collaboration, interministerial or intergovernmental, and us working with good organizations, well-known organizations such as BCCIE. I have prepared my uh, presentation and I would like to request Tom to uh, upload the presentation. Good morning. It is my pleasure to be part of the BCCIE special webinar with Simeo. And thank you for giving us this great opportunity to introduce the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education to the British Columbia community. The Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, or SEMEO, is an intergovernmental organization established in 1965 by our founding fathers, the Ministers of Education in Southeast Asia. It aims to promote cooperation in education, science, and culture, and further develop this field in the region. SEMEO member countries include 11 countries in Southeast Asia. Brunei Jerusalem, Cambodia, Lao PDR, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Timor Leste, and Vietnam. It also has eight associate member countries. They are countries not located in Southeast Asia, but they would like to work closely with Southeast Asian countries in improving its educational system, science, and culture. And Canada is one of those associate member countries. We also are working with affiliate members or organizations that are actually helping promote the same domains of education, science, and culture. And our latest member is BCCIE, which will be awarded membership by the Simeo Council of Ministers during this year's Simeo Council of Ministers meeting. As Simeo Council of Ministers comprises the policy-making body of Simeo, its head now, its president, is, 
His Excellency Dr. Brad C. G. Dean, Senior Minister of Education of the Ministry of Education, Malaysia. As the President of Simeo Council, he calls and approves some agenda coming from the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education, especially on regional education and development. The executive arm of Simeo Council is the Simeo Secretariat, who is located in Bangkok, Thailand, and hosted by the Thai government. We also receive funding support from the Ministry of Education of Thailand. Simeo has 26 regional centers of excellence with different fields of specialization from education, science, and culture. They are well known to provide capacity building, training, research, networking, and even publication in several global and regional journals. As approved by the 11 Ministers of Education of Southeast Asia, Simeo has seven education agenda for 2015 to 2035. And this was launched in 2015, almost simultaneous with the SDG goals. And the seven priority areas are in developing early childhood care and education, inclusive education or addressing barriers to inclusion, resiliency in the face of emergency, promoting technical vocational education and training, revitalizing teacher education and making it a priority of choice, modernizing higher education and research, and adapting 21st century curriculum. In response to the education agenda, 312 activities have been implemented by Simeo, Ministries of Education, as well as Simeo centers who are taking the lead in capacity building and research. To have a better understanding on Simeo and what it has done for the region, may I provide some examples of Simeo regional programs organized by the Secretariat with some centers. One, which is very, very recent, is the COVID-19 pandemic, which started in mid-March last year. Many of our capacity building programs and research activities were transformed into an online and mobile platform. We organized webinar series on Simeo's response to COVID-19 agenda and pandemic, and uh, we launched this since April 2020. The first Southeast Asian Policy Forum of Ministers was organized in June, and they were able to arrive at key agenda for the region during this time of pandemic such as doing more capacity building, developing more open educational resources for the region, or OERs, and strengthening partnership and networking so that we can reach the most disadvantaged learners in Southeast Asia. We have also organized High Officials mm -hmm. Forum, which was conducted in June and the another one in September, with participation of over 30,000 viewers. In addition, 13 webinars and nine lecture series in response to the COVID-19 pandemic were organized with almost 700,000 plus viewers. Simeo also conducted programs for improving school system in the broader area of uh, Thailand and Laos. This border area school project aims to equip the most disadvantaged schools with training, research, as well as improve their educational infrastructure to make sure that quality education can be delivered to these children who are in this advantage situation. Simeo and UNICEF collaborated on a regional program called Southeast Asia Primary Learning Metrics or CPLM. This is the first regional assessment to determine learning outcomes in reading, writing, mathematics, and global citizenship. Our report, is already available and it was launched last December 1, 2020. Simeo also created a network of open universities in Southeast Asia, and we call that umbrella as CMOOCs, Southeast Asia Massive Open Online 
courses. And we have worked together in several years before the pandemic to develop the Global Digital Literacy course, which is free and open to the public and funded by UNESCO headquarters. Simeo has also conducted the academic mobility programs for university students in Southeast Asia. And we have already expanded that to consider exchange of students with Japan in the recent a year before the pandemic. The program is to facilitate the work experience of students in another country for one to three months. At the moment, participating countries include Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, and Japan. The total number of students exchanged is about 3,438 and almost 200 universities and TVET institutions under our network. We would be glad to see BCCI universities joining our C-Teacher and c -Vet programs in the coming years. May I also introduce the upcoming program, CIMEO, in collaboration with STEM Ed Alliance of the US, MIT, JWell, Boston, System of the Philippines, and Unilab will organize the Integrated STEM Leadership Summit in Asia on 21st to 22nd of January, and we would like to invite you to join. Participation and registration is free. Next week, Simeo will conduct the Simeo Partners Lecture Series with the theme, Agility in Cross-Sector Trends and Transformation in Post-COVID-19 Pandemic. The first session is on Teacher Training Solutions on 28th January followed by innovative teaching solutions on the 4th of February. And the third session is on future skills for students and industry 4.0 solutions on 18th of February. 18 partners, has they have confirmed participation and presentation with free training courses and scholarship. It is also free for students and teachers in Southeast Asia. Simeo will conduct the virtual Simeo Congress with the theme Transforming Southeast Asian Education, Science, and Culture in the Digital Age. We would like to invite all educators, teachers, and students to participate in the Simeo Congress, including BCCI. It is free of charge for participation, and you can register using QR code for additional information as well as registration. Simeo's strength is in working in partnership with others, in collaborating and cooperating with others who share the same aspiration and vision with us in developing the region in education, science, and culture. I think inter-center collaboration and working with partners, these are the key strategies that we have adapted under the Simeo strategic plan. And we would like to contribute to the ASEAN integration 2025. So our uh, work is actually to collaborate with partners such as BCCI and other organizations who are willing to contribute to ongoing capacity building, research and development, partnership and networking. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good day. Thank you very much, Dr. Ethel, for your comments. Um, a really comprehensive introduction uh, to, to the network. Uh, and we look forward to kind of rebroadcasting those opportunities as well to uh, to our partners here in BC and across Canada. So thank you again for that. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Mi Fung, uh, our friend and colleague, a long-term partner for BCCIE and, and many uh, institutions throughout British Columbia who have participated, had the opportunity and the pleasure to participate in the annual conference at CMO Retract Center. So I will invite Dr. Mi Fung uh, to share a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Colin. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Vietnam. It is my great pleasure to share with you uh, the collaboration that we have been working with uh, in, um, from different Canadian um, institutions as well as our proposed um, activities for collaboration with uh, you, uh, different institutions from Canada, as well as from uh, other participants watching uh, this discussion this morning from Southeast Asia. As you can see in the photo, 
this is uh, our um, official campus. It is a uh, downtown Ho Chi Minh City. Some of you, uh, I'm sure, have been here for uh, different activities together with us um, during the past many years. I'd like to share with you our vision and mission. Um, we have just developed in, um, our five-year plan and our five-year plan from 2021 to 2026 has been approved by our governing board members in our recent meeting in 2020. So the vision of CML Retrack, CML Retrack means CML Regional Training Center. So our vision is to be a center of excellence in education in Southeast Asia and beyond. And that um, our mission is to assist CML member countries in identifying and addressing issues in education. Our programs and activities are of the four main areas. The first main area is uh, educational leadership and manage management. The second one is uh, more related to language education. The third one is about integration of ICT for teaching and learning. And our fourth uh, area is uh, research and development, educational exchange and services. So with that, we uh, have been cooperating, collaborating with different institutions uh, regionally, internationally, especially from Canada to deliver and offer quite a lot of training in educational leadership and management. Um, in the photo, you can see, maybe you see some familiar faces from Canada. Um, those are the training that we have conducted uh, during the past um, fiscal year and some previous recent years. So we have training for uh, educational uh, administrators, leaders from Southeast Asia countries as well as uh, from Vietnam um, in order to help them to improve and enhance their leadership capacity in uh, different levels of education. Um, for this one, it is uh, for the language teacher education. A uh, similarly truck is uh, among um, the famous uh, um, centers in Ho Chi Minh City for our excellent English language teaching. Also with that, we have done a lot of uh, English teaching for the community uh, and we do a lot of training for the teachers from the different provinces in Vietnam. Um, and now with the um, support of um, um, online learning, we have also conducted uh, training for the different countries, uh, including Cambodia, Lao Pia, Myanmar, uh, using the online mode. Um, as some of you may know, um, CML Retrack in Vietnam has been assigned by our Ministry of Education and Training to be one of the 10 uh, implementers of the national project, which is uh, the Foreign Languages Project. So with this project, Vietnam um, um, is uh, trying to improve the English language capacity of all teachers and students. Until 2025, students in Vietnam can use English, um, you know, in an easy way in their work as well as in their study. Uh, so, similarly, truck was assigned to be uh, one part of this uh, national foreign language project. So we do training for the teachers from the different provinces of Vietnam. So in our training, we try to improve the English proficiency as well as to help them uh, use the new English teaching methods 
especially to use ICT in their teaching. Um, talking about ICT, um, CMARY Truck has conducted quite a lot of teaching programs as well as the training programs for the teachers. Teachers in Ho Chi Minh City and also teachers from the many other provinces. Um, for this training, we also include um, the participants from Cambodia, from Laokiria. So we try to help the teachers to use ICT in their teaching. And especially um, in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, online teaching has been a very good replacement for the teaching. So in Vietnam, even though sometimes we have to close the schools, but the study is still um, continuous. So, uh, and, and we have to improve the capacity of our teachers in order to be able to do online teaching to make sure that the study is a continue, is in continue. Um, in the photo, um, I'd like to introduce to you our next um, area of um, operation. So uh, we have worked with many institutions from different countries, including Canada. And every year we host quite a lot of uh, educational fairs um, for the different institutions from Canada as well. Um, with that, we um, have developed more and more collaborative programs, uh, especially educational exchange programs. So uh, you see, we um, bring our students overseas to the different institutions, and also we welcome the students from the different institutions from Canada and some other countries to come to Vietnam um, to learn more about um, the different, uh, you know, the Asian um, lifestyles as well as uh, to exchange with the students from the different uh, universities in Vietnam. On the screen, I'd like to share with you some of our key uh, <coughs> partners. Recent, uh, our key partner uh, recently, and among the partners that you see on the screen, um, the percentage of Canadian partners um, is a majority. <coughs> um, BCCIE uh, has been our strategic partner for many years. We started our collaboration with quite a lot of activities, and among them is uh, the the co-organizing our international conference every year. So started from 2010, uh, we collaborated and co-organized in our international conference on decentralization in higher education from a global perspective. So we, um, <coughs> BCCIE, um, brought to the conference quite a lot of very famous speakers who are presidents, chancellor, vice chancellor from the different Canadian universities. And uh, the um, conference participants had a great time to listen to their sharing, their presentation, as well as to develop uh, more partnerships with those universities in Canada. Not, not just for that. We also had a lot of collaboration with BCCIE in doing trainings. So uh, BCCIE introduced to us, um, <clears throat> selected the trainers for our training um, programs, especially our regional training programs. So um, there was time that um, the trainers from BCCIE went with us to Laopedia for our in-country training in Laopedia. And the participants from the training program 
uh, had a lot of good feedback with the sharing from the trainers uh, brought by BCCIE. And not only that, we had a lot of collaboration in our training seminars in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, um, those are the regional training programs when we bring in um, the participants from Lao, Kiria, Cambodia, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Um, beside BCCIE, we um, recently started from 2018, we work with University of Victoria on the Queen's Elizabeth Scholarship Program. And with this, we um, um, brought into, uh, we, we have um, interns from University of Victoria coming to work uh, with us um, some months of the year. And recently, uh, unfortunately, uh, the COVID-19 uh, prevented those interns to come to Vietnam, but we are trying to, finding, uh, to find some other a replacement or some other ways to move on with this program with the University of Victoria. Um, Hammerson College, Cabilano Cab Universities are also among our partners um, of the different programs at Simeritra. Um, long time ago, even more than 10 years ago, we had a certificate training program with Hammerson College. And with that program, we um, work together to train um, the teachers um, who need the certificate of English teaching for the program. And then recently, again, we also worked with Hamilton College and also Cabilano University for quite a lot of training programs, uh, especially in educational leadership and management and English language teaching. The College of the Rockies is also among our key partners. Um, uh, we started our collaboration in 2017 um, and uh, the trainers from the College of the Rockies came to uh, Simeri Track and Ho Chi Minh City and together with us, to deliver uh, seminars on the 21st century leadership. And started from that, uh, almost every year, we had um, uh, collaborative training programs in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, and we benefit quite a lot of participants from Vietnam as well as um, many other neighboring um, Southeast Asian countries. Um, in order to um, propose uh, some uh, collaborative activities, I would like to share with you similar retract priority areas in our new uh, five-year plan. So we have identified and uh, those areas have been approved by our governing board members uh, the first one is uh, educational leadership and management, and the second one, language education. We also prioritize educational technology, educational quality, equity and inclusiveness, quality assurance and accreditation for education, technical and vocational education and training, and finally, number seven, the life skills and 21st century skills. I'd like to present to you some proposed activities. Um, the first area is in educational leadership and management. So we would like to continue to collaborate with, um, with you, with the different Canadian um, institutions and universities in the capacity building and leadership development for the region uh, in the form of international conference, um, the regional uh, training, uh, as well as uh, the webinar, especially in uh, the COVID-19 period. 
The second area I would like to propose for collaboration is the joint research. Um, we are um, working on research at Cimeri Drug, and our research usually focus on uh, regional or comparative research in education. So we would like to invite your collaboration in this area as well. The next one is the area of language education. So as you see, uh, at Cimeri Drug, uh, the two key areas um, of our um, our work is uh, uh, educational leadership and management, and the second one is a uh, language education. So we would like to invite your collaboration in terms of language education, uh, and to be more specific, that that is uh, the the English language education for the students who are about to go overseas for their study and also for the teachers uh, and educators who need to improve their English proficiency. And the next area is uh, global engagement programs. Uh, recently, we work with um, some other institutions, um, not from Canada yet, but um, to do um, more training on global citizenship. We would like to uh, invite your collaboration uh, to develop our uh, and also to deliver our training programs on uh, global citizenship education. And also with that, we would like to invite your collaboration in uh, working with us to deliver more training programs for the students who want to go overseas for their study, who want to go to Canada for their study. Um, not now, because uh, we cannot go out of the country now, but then um, some preparation for their overseas studies, um, and we hope sometime in 2022. And finally, uh, we'd like to invite your partnership uh, in um, many other areas, uh, overseas study, uh, and also collaboration on any other uh, educational um, uh, related uh, areas. And with that, uh, I would like to send to you one message before I finish uh, my presentation. And uh, that is Simeo Ritra, welcome and invite the collaborations from all of the Canadian institutions um, to, with our CMRE track in order to develop and also to um, for enhancement of uh, all educators, teachers, and also students. Thank you very much for your attention. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Bifang, and uh, for, for laying out all those opportunities for uh, Canadian uh, institutions to engage at all, at all levels. Um, uh, that's uh, extremely helpful and exactly the type of information that we're trying to, to share here today. Uh, at this point, um, uh, so thank you again for your remarks, Dr. Mikong. At this point, we're going to move into the uh, case study area. We're going to have a couple examples, one from uh, Victoria Lee at the principal of Burnaby South Secondary School, and she'll uh, start that momentarily, followed by Carolyn Russell at University of Victoria. Uh, we're, we're running a little bit behind, so I've invited uh, Carolyn to stay uh, additional 10 minutes or so uh, following Victoria's presentation. Uh, I understand if some of you need to hop off the call, but if you are able to stay a, a few extra minutes, that would be uh, wonderful. We would appreciate that. And, and just, just a reminder before Victoria starts that this is a part one of a part two event. The week of March 15th, uh, we will have that um, B2B meetings where institutions from across BC and Canada will have opportunity to to talk directly to training centers and colleagues throughout the CMEO network. And those on the institutions on the call today will receive uh, information and instructions about uh, how to engage in that uh, event. So, um, Victoria, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Colin. I'm so pleased to be here um, and presenting um, on my amazing opportunity to visit the, the beautiful country of Laos. Um, 
So in 2018, uh, the Ministry of Education um, and my school district um, and the CIE uh, uh, worked with Simeo Retrack and I was invited to present in the beautiful, beautiful uh, Long Prabang. Um, and uh, I like this picture. It's my favorite picture. I don't know who's happier, me or the elephant. And uh, I, uh, I, it was my goal in our trip to find some time, some spare extra time to, uh, to go play with the elephants. And it was amazing. It was a, a dream come true, a lifetime goal. Um, I uh, came to uh, Lao uh, to present on the new BC curriculum and on aspects of, of standards-based uh, assessment, inquiry, competency-based, this one. Um, and uh, to talk a, a little bit about how uh, the Ministry of Education ruled out these very big changes in BC's curriculum and how I personally worked with my staff to implement uh, these very significant changes in our in our school. And, and I wanted to introduce some of my passion areas, which are inquiry and competency-based learning. Um, I was very quickly informed by my colleagues from Vietnam, which I thank them so much for their amazing um, advice. And Dr. Mi Fong uh, was uh, just absolutely amazing um, in helping me to understand a little bit about um, the people that I would be presenting to. And uh, she recommended debate and discussion and said that uh, it, it culturally Lao, everyone loves a good, a good debate. Um, and I have to say, it was on the very first day that I realized in these um, raucous debates that we had that I was gonna learn as much as I was going to teach when I was there. Um, their uh, ability to talk about their culture and to talk about the ways that it's impacted their, um, their education system, really, I was just, I, I came home with so many ideas and thoughts about even my many students in my school who happened to come from this area of the world and some of the mistakes that we've been making culturally with those students and some of the assumptions that we were making that were were wrong and ways that we could make education a richer experience. Um, this, as you can, might recognize Randall, uh, Randall um, talking with some of the monks. Um, I was very impressed with my colleagues um, from Laos. Uh, they were very caring and very much wanted to know. Um, I really, the, the discussions were a lot like the discussions that I have with my colleagues in BC. We talked about, well, how do you implement that system? How do you get your teachers on board? How do you get your parents um, to see that this is a good thing? Um, how do we let students um, do more critical thinking in their classes? So they were very vibrant discussions. Uh, when I returned to my school, I shared what I had learned with my staff and then with my greater colleagues in Burnaby. And I would say that the, the thing that I learned was that the most important important element of education is a caring relationship between students, teachers, parents, and the school system. And it, it really was amazing for me to see the work that CMEO Retract was doing to help this very impoverished country. This country, uh, Lao, is, is considered to be the world's poorest country, and yet they had these amazing, um, this organization coming in to help them and to improve their education system. Um, I learned that all children want to learn. Um, the, the students were were that the, in the classrooms that we visited, um, and this this school was right underneath where we were doing our presentation. So whenever I had a chance, I would sneak down to see what the kids were doing. And uh, and yes, you, you can see that this is not a classroom that um, that uh, I would have in BC. We have many advantages, um, but learning was happening in these rooms. Um, this picture, if it was taken in BC, would be of, of a child um, neglecting her duties in the market to play on her phone to talk to her friends. But upon closer inspection, when I went up to talk to this girl, she was actually doing her homework. Um, and what I saw was a dedication of people for education. Their parents and the children took education very seriously. The, the students and their parents would work in the market in the morning. 
we would see them in their uniforms, then we would see them at the school during the day when we were doing our presentations, and then in the evening, I'd see them again working in the market while also doing their homework. Um, saw a lot of smiling faces. Uh, a lot of, lot of kids were really happy to see us and welcome us and tell us a little bit about themselves. And, uh, and I just, it really made me realize that kids are kids uh, around the world and it's wonderful um, to be able to see that it isn't just the beautiful buildings that we have. I also found out that monks play <laughs> and uh, had a lot of pictures of monks. In in the larger picture, uh, that boy uh, is actually bullying the younger boy. And you will see later, I, I didn't take that picture, but uh, an older monk comes in and scolds him for it. Um, so children are children. And they were as interested in us as we were in them. Um, it was it was New Year's when we were there, and uh, there the tradition is that the children uh, spray water on the adults, which was fun. It was a lot of fun to see. We got a little wet, but uh, it was great to see um, the parents in in this culture um, are very involved with their children, and it it was just really uh, a really lovely thing to see. Um, Schools are not what they have, but who they have. I, I, I came back and a strong message to my staff was, we're not the computers in our computer lab. We're not the robotics um, equipment we have. It's these relationships between students and students and their teachers. Um, again, the students were, were incredibly open and uh, wonderful to talk to. Um, the facilities, again, maybe not what we have, but you can see kids out there, they're playing sports, they're managing to cover courses. Um, in this, in these um, fairly, uh, you know, scant resources in these rooms, um, students were doing chemistry, they were doing biology, they were they were doing high level studies and, and they were taking it very seriously. They had a lot of disadvantages to, to learning, but they were adamant about getting that learning. And again, they love to laugh. Um, I, I put this picture up. It's a side-by-side -side picture of my school and, and one of the classrooms that we visited. And uh, other than a little bit of equipment, there is no difference. Those are kids that are engaged in doing something. They're enjoying themselves um, and they're communicating with each other. So I think that uh, inquiry and um, problem-based so, uh, problem learning is, uh, is well on its way uh, thanks to um, the support that the government is getting. Um, this is the middle picture is a little girl sleeping in her in the basket. Her mother brought her wares to the market in at, in the evening because she got tuckered out at the at the market. And the parents, my gosh, the, the, I didn't include a picture uh, that we saw many times, which was um, you know six children loaded onto one motorcycle. Uh, driving themselves to school. Um, it was a bit scary to, to watch and I didn't want to make you go through that. <laughs> but, um, but they were perfectly safe and all wearing helmets. Um, but, but, they, but it was a bit harrowing for us to watch. Um, but we saw parents bringing their children to school in many different ways, including by boat. Um, so very dedicated a group of, of uh, adults um, wanting the very best for their children. And I saw a lot of, of the cultural influences that the education sister, system, um, the, the, the way it influenced it. And I think I, I really came back understanding a little bit even more about Canadian cultural influences. And I, and I, I was definitely more aware after this uh, relationship. And I just want to comment that this is our host, the, the woman um, that you're seeing is, is one of our um, Lao hosts. And uh, I, I took a a uh, picture of her in prayer, but with her permission. I wouldn't want you to think that I would do that without uh, her permission. But uh, it, it's uh, it's a beautiful place with incredible people. Um, the best part for me was collaboration, and Randall wanted me to point out that it was after hours, the one time he drank beer, that one picture. Uh, <laughs> and um, here we are, just, just amazing discussions in the evening, and uh, and you might recognize uh, Dr. Mifeng in the middle picture. Um, and we just, it was a terrific opportunity. I had no idea how much I was going to learn on this trip. 
Um, in June of 2008, I was honored to host two of my fellow presenters and hosts um, to my school. So Dr. Mi Fung and Dr. Thu came to see Burnaby South and and see what was happening in my school and to get a, bit, a better look at some of the the um, the STEAM program, which is our our uh, science, math, and engineering practical engineering program and um, to look at some of our inquiry projects and critical based, uh, critical thinking based activities. And that was a very, I was very honored and as were my teachers to have them come and visit us. And uh, Dr. Mifong, anytime you want to come and visit or bring anyone to visit, um, Burnaby South is happy to host you. Um, so uh, I would like to thank uh, Simeo Retrack and everyone who is involved um, and BCCIE for allowing me to have this opportunity because I have to say it was the best professional development opportunity of my quite extensive career. So thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Victoria, and thank you for sharing all the images and to give us uh, kind of a on the ground picture and uh, understanding of, of what that experience was for you. Um, so th thank you so much for sharing that. So we will uh, wrap up with our final uh, case study. Uh, I'll invite Carolyn Russell, Executive Director of Global Engagement from University of Victoria to, to round out uh, today's presentation. And thank you for everybody that can stay a little bit, uh, a little bit longer today. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Colin, and thank thank you everybody for um, the the presentations have been amazing, and it's always hard to be um, the one at the end, but I hope that um, uh, you'll take away something from the the University of Victoria experience with um, Simeo Retrack in Vietnam. Um, before I begin, I I would like to acknowledge with respect that I'm joining you from the Lekwungen people's um, territory, on who whose land. Um, the University of Victoria stands uh, and the Songhees, Esquimalt and Wasanic peoples whose historical relationship with the land continue to this day. Um, I, I, I want to share a little bit um, about the University of Victoria's uh, relationships in Vietnam uh, because that's, that's really a, what led us to the relationship that we hold today with the Simeo Retrack Office. The University of Victoria has been active in Vietnam since the late 1980s and early 1990s um, when the first links with our institution in Vietnam began, um, were established with the Faculty of Law and the Law University of Hanoi. And the focus at that time um, and has been to a certain extent, although it's evolved over the years, um, been focused on the development and delivery of law reform um, research and training and assistance in um, Vietnam, which is very much aligned with the Simeo Retrack work in Vietnam. Um, we also extended through over the years relationships in Vietnam with the Foreign Trade University, as well as RMIT uh, Vietnam, which is the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, which has a campus in both Hanoi and um, Ho Chi Minh City. Um, Vietnam as a country is also considered a tier one, uh, meaning um, important <laughs> recruitment country for the University of Victoria. And we recruit students from uh, Vietnam to both undergraduate and graduate programs at the University of Victoria um, every year. Certainly, um, our relationships and long-standing involvement in working with Vietnamese institutions has, does make us somewhat unique in the Canadian university context and certainly in the Western Canadian university um, context. Vietnam's a very important country um, to the University of Victoria and we've been um, very um, uh, privileged to have the special relationship that we do with Simeo Retrack. And the, the relationship with Simeo Retrack came as a result of uh, BCCIE's uh, 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 collaboration with the Simeo Retrack office in their annual conference and delivering the annual conference. And our president at the time, Professor Jamie Castles, was invited to be a keynote uh, speaker at the 2016 conference in Ho Chi Minh City. 
um, where he um, presented on um, the topic of changes, challenges, and leadership in higher education. And we had a fantastic um, four or five day visit to Ho Chi Minh City um, and participated in the conference and made some great connections through that conference um, that ultimately resulted in the following year, a um, formal uh, relationship with uh, the CMEO Retrack Office. So in March of 2017, the University of Victoria and CMEO Retrack uh, signed an agreement of cooperation. And the, the agreement has a whole number of areas that we agreed to focus on, but just a few that I'll highlight um, here today are um, a commitment to supporting leadership and management training, um, our uh, interests in advancing uh, internship and work integrated learning opportunities um, at CMEO, retract for UVic students, and um, UVic, um, faculty and staff participation in conferences and other training that's organized by CMEO Retrack. So um, in uh, 2017, I uh, visited uh, the CMEO Retrack office and met with um, Dr. Ni Fung and um, signed, formally signed our agreement of cooperation. Um, and then following that, we've had um, visits from uh, a number of senior leaders at the University of Victoria, our Dean of Social Sciences, as well of our, as our Dean of Science and our Dean of Education, have all made formal visits um, to the CMEO Retrack office in Ho Chi Minh City to discuss opportunities for um, collaboration and different ways that we can support um, each other's international interests. The piece that, that we've, I, I'd say, our, our, our most um, successful outcome as a result of our relationship with the CMEO Retrack office has been, and uh, Dr. Mi Fung talked about this as well in her presentation, is our um, successful Queen Elizabeth Scholar uh, proposal that was uh, submitted in 2017 and then funded in 2018, um, which supports the placement of University of Victoria students in internships uh, with the CMEO Retrack office in Ho Chi Minh City. And over the course of the, the relationship, we've been successful in placing four students thus far. We, we have had six placements, but unfortunately due to COVID-19, we had to postpone um, the placements in 2020. Um, in 2018, we had a student um, in the uh, biology program as well as a student, a master's student in public administration uh, participate in a uh, internship. And then in 2019, we had a graduate student in global business um, and then another um, student in psychology. And for those of you who are um, active in uh, following BCCIE communication and their social media channels, you might recall that um, the University of Victoria uh, was featured in a story from BCCIE around the relationship with CMEO um, and our student Samuel Hudson, um, who uh, completed the first group of um, interns in 2018. He was our graduate student in public admin, was featured in a story um, and talked about his experience and the value of that experience and how it's um, shaped the work that he is doing now. Um, so we're really excited about that uh, program and look forward to opportunities to um, continue to do um, that work. We also undertook, um, as a result of our relationship with CBO Retrack in, in Ho Chi Minh City, um, the University of Victoria's relationships were very much focused in northern Vietnam and in the Hanoi area. So it was very, we were very interested in expanding our connections into southern Vietnam. So as a result of our relationships with CMEO Retrack, we were introduced to the Vietnam National University of Ho Chi Minh City University of Science and the Vietnam National University of Ho Chi Minh City University of Social Science and Humanities. And we've since signed um, agreements of co cooperation with both institutions and are exploring 
uh, the implementation um, and, um, and hopeful um, conclusion of uh, dual and double degrees with both institutions that would see um, students from Vietnam uh, coming to the University of Victoria in their third year to complete uh, programs with us here. So um, really exciting to have been able to do that. Um, certainly the relationship with Simeo Retrack has um, expanded the opportunity for us to, to make connections um, and that's been um, very uh, supportive for us in advancing our global engagement interests. So as far as thinking about this new opportunity um, that uh, the relationship that the BCCIE has established with um, CMEO as a, a, a member of the Secretariat and the affiliate membership, there's a number of, of exciting things that we're looking forward to exploring um, with uh, both the CMEO Retrack office, but of course other um, member uh, uh, countries and uh, organizations. And looking um, in particular, um, the opportunity in this environment to continue exploring opportunities to host interns virtually. Um, the University of Victoria has been extremely successful in this um, very challenging environment in continuing to support our uh, work integrated learning programs and continues to, sp to support students in international uh, will programs. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to continue to, to do that, but of course excited to return to more normal um, activity as well. Um, also interested and looking forward to exploring opportunities to expand um, the internship program more generally uh, throughout um, Southeast Asia. Um, the University of Victoria has um, a commitment to seeing uh, all students at the university have an, uh, uh, an experiential learning uh, opportunity as a result of their study with the University of Victoria. So this is a, a really important piece of our global activity and something that, um, that we look to partners of, uh, all over the world, but certainly in Southeast Asia um, to support. Um, and then of course, we're also very interested in expanding our research partnership relationships. And in particular, in the areas of ocean and climate action, indigenous research and rec reconciliation and health and wellness. So we'll look forward to opportunities to work with um, CMEO and CMEO member uh, states and, and organizations in order to um, support the University of Victoria's interests, but also support the interests of um, the organizations um, and member states associated with CMEO. So uh, that rounds out my, my presentation and just an opportunity to uh, again, say thank you to the BCCIE for the introduction uh, to CMEO Retrack and a special thanks to Dr. Mi Fung and her team for all of their support of our um, collaboration and, um, and activities over the year. we, years. We look forward to um, continuing our relationship with you. So thanks very much. Excellent. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks for um sharing with us uh, the past uh, past work and ongoing and, and especially kind of mapping out some of the future opportunities that, that you forecast. Uh, I re really appreciate that. So thank you for that portion. Um, I, uh, given given the time, uh, I think what, I, what I'd like to suggest is uh, we um, collect the questions and we have a number of questions that have come in. And uh, one of the main questions that we have had has been, um, uh, what now? Uh, wh where do we go from here? And so, so <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so with that abrupt end, uh, that concludes the pre-recorded portion of this particular event. Um, uh, for, for for today, that was uh, broadcast originally on January 19th, and that was really uh, meant to introduce and set the stage for what we're looking forward to um, next week, which will be the uh, live B2B session between 
participating British Columbian and Canadian institutions and in schools from higher education, from K through 12, from language, and with our colleagues throughout the CMEO network in Southeast Asia. Uh, and that's including, of course, the training centers um, and their uh, affiliate institutions uh, and members that are able to participate as part of that CMEO, CMEO community. Um, so uh, this was also a chance to ask any questions as well. But before I get to those questions, if we have any, I'm just going to um, uh, highlight a few of the things concerning next week, uh, just so that uh, you, you're aware of those and just kind of clarify uh, the event as well. So um, again, the, uh, the part two of this event is really next week uh, on March 15th and 16th. Uh, BC or Canada time, that's uh, March 16th and 17th, and for our friends in, in Southeast Asia. Um, so again, that, that uh, is uh, two days where there's actually um, time set aside for one-on-one -on -one or B2B meetings. Um, and we'll, we'll put those details in, in, the, in the chat function again, uh, but, but that's what really this is leading up to. So the nature of that event, uh, th there won't be any more kind of uh, broadcasts or or webinar uh, portions of that. It's really a chance to move from the kind of high level discussion into one-to-one -one meetings. Um, and that's uh, where we have invited participants to set up, uh, to register on our platform, the SWUGO B2B meeting platform, input information uh, that sets up the institutional and individual profiles. And that will bring in the parties to be able to look at the institutions, <clears throat> identify mutual areas, for uh, possible collaboration and partnership and cooperation, um, and then set a set a initial meeting time. Uh, the meetings we have blocked out half an hour meetings to happen over those four hour periods on those dates next week uh, between Monday Monday and Wednesday, depending on your your time zone. So we set up that platform, and then of course from there, that's a, a for for many of us, it will be a first time to actually sit down and and talk with each other through through video chat. And uh, our hope, of course, is that will lead uh, to further discussions and, and hopefully some concrete out outcomes. And you heard some of those concrete outcomes, examples of those uh, from, from University of Victoria and Burnaby School District here in BC with their collaboration uh, with the uh, training center in Ho Chi Minh City, just, just for example. So we really hope to develop um, uh, more, more examples and, and concrete outcomes of that as well. Just a little bit of an update on next week's event. We actually have 150 participants so far coming from uh, nine different countries, including Canada and nine CMEO training centers. So, so a really great mix. And I just want to thank everybody for, for registering so far and, and taking this event to heart. We've worked hard to kind of bring these groups together and to really advance uh, ours, our affiliate membership, the BC Council, for international education or affiliate membership within the, the CMEO, CMEO network. So we're really ha uh, happy to hear uh, about the number of participants and in, in the interest. So, so thank you again for, 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 for registering for these events. And we really hope for some good concrete outcomes. And this is, uh, like I said, part two is next week, but this will be an ongoing uh, enterprise really between uh, the British Columbia Council for International Education and, and our responsibility and opportunity uh, to to uh, to connect and advance these cooperations uh, between our jurisdictions. Um, the other uh, aspect, just on the um, if if sorry, uh, maybe I'll just mention this now. If you have not registered for the B two B platform uh, to begin to set up your profile, um, we have I think uh, my colleague uh, Gabriel has put the link in the chat box. Um, and if you're still a little bit unsure about the event or if you haven't to, uh, aren't fully aware of what's happening, you can also just email us directly and I'll uh, invite Gab to put that uh, uh, email in if you have specific questions for us, if you're a little bit unsure about the details around this. So, so uh, please take advantage of that and we'd be happy to answer your, your questions as well. Um, on the website now, for those of you that uh, have registered and have set up your pro profile or, or have started to, uh, we have uh, completed the frequently asked questions portion, the FAQs, and that's a really helpful guide if you're having some difficulties setting up the profile uh, or if you have any specific questions that I think should be able to answer quite a few of them for you. Um, 
And uh, again, you, you can just contact us directly at, the, at the, that email address that Gab put in the, the chat box and is also on our website as well. Um, yeah, so, so, so those are the, the, the highlights uh, that, that I wanted to reinforce here. And I think at this point, I'm going to move into the, the, the Q&A portion. I think, uh, I know we have one question that I'll, I'll try to respond to now. Um, but if you do have any other questions uh, right now, feel free to put them in the chat box. We have a little bit of time to go through those. Um, if you have questions after this, of course, again, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to, to email us or get in contact and we'll uh, do our best to respond to those as well. We had one question from the uh, Technical Vocation Ed Education and Training College. I think it was a private college in Thailand. Uh, again, just about how, how best to collaborate. Um, so again, we can do that on, on a couple different uh, different platforms. One, of course, is for you to participate in this event and, and you've learned about it th through, through this initiative. Uh, and this will, uh, again, give you the opportunity to connect with some BC and Canadian institutions that, that might look like good contacts for you. If you're a little bit uncertain about where to start, feel free to reach out to us as well. And, and we can uh, make some suggestions maybe before you go into that. Or if there's a connection really that falls outside of this particular event or platform, we can um, uh, recommend something as well. So, so feel free to contact us. Um, there, if you have any questions that aren't answered, maybe in the FAQs or in the platform itself, or if again, if you're a little bit unsure about the nature of the event. Um, one uh, uh, point I'd like to make as well is this is meant to uh, be engaging for both higher education and K through 12. So for example, we had a representative from our uh, high school, uh, Burnaby uh, High School here in British Columbia that, that did some cooperation in, in Laos. So, so, so that was a, a great example of, of this kind of teacher training leadership opportunities that was based specifically around uh, some of the work that British Columbia has done in terms of updating and modernizing its K through 12 curriculum. So, and she was able to share that with her colleagues in Laos as well. So uh, that, that, that's just an example. And, and, and we uh, are aware there's a fair bit of activity coming out of the Philippines in terms of their K through 12 engagement. So we will be ensuring or trying to ensure representation from our K through 12 sector as well. But in some cases, uh, the K through 12 sector, kindergarten through grade 12 might be interested in connecting with a higher education institution in terms of further teacher training, for example, or research or some sort of collaboration. So we're aware of that as well. So we will try to do our best to make those matches uh, much of our work at the council is matchmaking. So uh, again, we're committed to doing that and, and putting you in contact with the best um, partner uh, in British Columbia and or, or Canada as possible. Um, so I don't see any other questions coming in at this point. So I think what I'll do in the absence of, of questions right now, I think what I'll do um, is uh, bring this session to, to a close. Um, and thank everyone again for joining us. We have about 40 participants uh, for this session uh, today, the rebroadcast and this live portion. So thank you all for joining us. Um, and uh, we really look forward to seeing you again uh, next week on, uh, on Monday and Tuesday um, and Wednesday, again, depending on your, 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 uh, your time zone to join us for those half an hour B2B meetings that, that uh, we're, we're putting together. And uh, again, that, that will be a chance to, to meet, but of course uh, we encourage you to meet uh, following those and outside of those meetings, but this is really a, a first approach to bringing people together in a facilitated manner. And again, we are your partner here to ensure those are successful. If you have any questions at all, uh, please do not hesitate to, uh, to get a hold of us. So again, thank you. And uh, I'll close the session uh, at this point. Thank you for attending and see you next week.